All right. Hey, welcome. Ben Geisler here. And today we're going to talk about oiling leather. Um, there's a lot of information about meats for oil out uh, on the internet, and uh, a lot of it's outdated. Some of it's not applicable. Um, I'm going to share with you my thoughts on it, uh, what I do, what I don't do, and why. And a couple of tips and tricks as far as how to make the process better and easier and more consistent for you. So uh, first things first, why oil this at all? Um, using oil to reintroduce moisture and kind of stabilize the moisture content of the leather has been done really forever. Um, makes it last longer, it tends to keep it from drying out. Um, in a lot of cases, it improves the appearance. So there's lots of reasons to do it, but Neat's Foot Oil isn't applicable for most leathers, right? Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, Neat's Foot Oil is mostly uh, something that you used on veg tan, natural veg tan. Um, and there's some things that we can do with it. So what am I talking about? Well, ugh, I'm a big fan of Neat's Foot Oil. This is what I use. It is uh, Shep's Pure Neat's Foot Oil. And the pure part's important. Um, there are two kinds of Neat's Foot Oil on the market. There's Pure Neat's Foot Oil, what I've got there. And then there's uh, Neat's Foot Oil Compound. Now, Compound is Neat's Foot Oil that's been mixed with other petroleum-based oils. Uh, in theory, it penetrates faster, but, um, you know, I'll talk about other types of oils later. But gear oil or mineral oil or many of these other oils aren't necessarily suitable for your leather stuff, right? Um, so there you have it. So <clears throat> with Needs Foot Oil, you got a couple of options as far as application goes. Um, I've got two belts here. Uh, one I'm going to be using tinted Needs Foot Oil on, and then one I'm going to be using uh, one I'm going to be using just pure heated Needs Foot Oil. You'll see on my bench here. I've got a couple of crock pots. Uh, this crock pot is tinted oil and it's unheated. And this crock pot is plain old regular oil uh, and it's heated. So the reason for heating Neat's Foot Oil is that it greatly improves the absorption of the oil and it takes away the possibility. Well, not the possibility, but generally takes away spew. Now, all spew is, is when you over apply Neat's Foot Oil or you apply a heavy coat, it leaves like a, like a white film on your leather. Uh, it looks kind of greasy, uh, sort of like a frying pan after you've got done with the bacon and you let it sit on the stove and cool off. So that's not really a desirable thing to have. Um, and you want to avoid it if you can. Now, I came across heating Neat's Foot Oil uh, as it was recommended by Shep Herman from Herman Oak Leather. And as far as I'm concerned, if Shep Herman thinks it's the right thing to put on his leather, uh, you know, maybe it's the right thing. Um, anyway, so heating it. Speeds absorption, requires fewer coats, almost eliminates spew. It's really good stuff. Um, and it's not that hard to do. I use these little two quart crock pots, put them on low, takes maybe 20 minutes. What you're looking for is a temperature of about 120 F. Um, I've got a thermo wand here, which is just uh, a little temperature probe. Got it off Amazon, I think. They're not terribly expensive. I just dip it in here and see where we're at. Right now, this oil's at about 100 and 20. So I'll go ahead and cut the temp off. That'll be fine. So I'll let that sit for a minute and we'll get ready to oil. Now, this other crock pot, I'm using tinted oil. And a lot of people say, well, you know, I want to have more color in my leather, but I don't really want to dye it. Um, you know, how can I get a richer color out of it? And it's really not that complex. So what you need to do is get a hold of Feebing's dye, not Feebing's Pro Dye. Pro Dye won't work. You need Feebing's regular dye. So Feebing's regular dye will is oil soluble. So it will actually combine with your oil and become a uh, you know kind of a, a consistent mm, consistent's not the right word um, homogeneous product. Whereas if you use oil dye, oil dye will emulsify. So it makes sort of like a, an oil and dye vinaigrette. And it gives you these really weird, inconsistent, uh, you know, results on leather. It can cause you a little bit of trouble. So you don't want to go that way. Um, so you get Feebing's regular dye, and then you need to mix it with your oil at a very slight ratio. Um, 
I don't have any bottles of this dye to demonstrate with right now. Mine are just completely covered in dye. They're hideous. And uh, yeah, I mean, you're not going to be able to see anything. But the ratio is 96% by volume oil to dye. No, 94%. My mistake. So you need, uh, for example, for 100 milliliters of oil, you need six milliliters of dye. Now you can mix the dye any way that you want to. You can use a solid color. You can use uh, a mixture of colors. It comes in a lot of different colors. And you can use that to, uh, to give yourself a, a, a more unique finish. The other advantage of tinting your oil is that if you want a really rich color. You can establish that rich color without uh, oversaturating your leather with, with oil. At some point, if you want it to be darker, you've got to tint it because it's just not going to get darker. Um, as far as the mixing goes, uh, you know, pick numbers that are easy to work with. My example was with a uh, hundred milliliters because you can really easily get a hundred milliliters of oil into a crock pot. And then you can use a, a veterinary syringe or even like an old Tylenol syringe or really any sort of measuring device that will get you that six milliliters of dye and uh, you mix a combination in with your oil, stir it around, it will become, uh, you know, a solution. And that's about as difficult as it gets. Now, what I'm going to do here, since I've got two different belts that I'm working on, this belt, uh, I'm going to use just regular oil on, uh, and then I'm going to work with the tinted oil. And the reason I'm going in that order is that I don't want to contaminate the plain belt with, uh, with dye. And so <clears throat> I'm going to throw on some nitro gloves here. Um, there's not really a reason to do this with the plain dye. It just keeps your hands from getting greasy. Uh, when it comes to the other dye, however, it will turn your hands colors. So, you know, protect yourself. As far as application goes, I use, uh, I use pieces of, uh, wool skin. Um, you know, wool skin scrap is easy to come by. I'm a saddle maker, so I've got this stuff everywhere. Um, and it's a great way to get the oil on your leather. You've got to be careful, though. When you first dip this, it gets really saturated, and it's really easy to over-apply. So I'm going to do what I can to not over-apply here. Uh, but you'll see really quickly how, uh, how well this oil absorbs. So this oil is at 119 degrees uh, F. And I'm just going to take it here and just a long, even strokes. You want to uh, not really dilly dally in one place. You know, apply it as evenly as you can. And then once you've got an even coat, you want to walk away. Okay, this oil is going to need to sit for probably a day before you really know what needs to be touched up. And the oiling process typically takes a day to, I mean, on a saddle, it can even take a week, depending on your relative humidity, what color you're trying to achieve, how even it is, how much stamping there is. But when you first oil it, it's going to get really dark. So you can see here how much depth that's brought out already, but it's, uh, it's turned a really, really dark color, uh, which we're going to contrast now. I'm just going to give this one more buff to kind of even it out, uh, which we're going to contrast with the tinted oil. Now, <clears throat> the most kind of obvious thing with the tinted oil, uh, one, I don't heat it, okay? Uh, I don't have any reason specifically that I don't heat it, other than when you heat it up, it gives off this awful chemical smell, and I'm pretty sure it can't be good for you. And I rarely, if ever, have few issues with tinted uh Oil, and I don't know if that's because the the dye component affects it just a little bit, so it doesn't build up. Really not sure, uh, but I know it works. So there you have it. Now the tinted oil that I have in here is a russet color that is kind of proprietary to me. Um, and when you put it on the sponge, I don't know if you can see, but this stuff is is reddish orange. I mean, it, it's really dark uh, looking stuff. But when I apply it to this belt blank you're gonna see rather than getting that dark hot oil color, this almost immediately goes uh, to the russet color that we want on the finished product, right? And whereas the belt blank that I did first with the plain oil might ultimately take, you know, three, four coats to get it to the color that I want, uh, this one here 
is going to take two, right? The main difference here is that as this dries uh, and it absorbs the oil, this belt will almost return to natural color. It'll be maybe a little bit darker uh, than natural, but not a lot. Whereas this other one is going to be probably 70% of what you see here, right? Just this really nice russet color. Um, but as you see, applying the oil, super, super simple to do. Now, there's not a lot more to it, but uh, we can go back around to the discussion. Okay, what oil do you use? You know, because there's always somebody, right? There's always somebody that's going to say, well, I use olive oil. I use uh, whatever, avocado oil, you name it. And, you know, from, uh, from a basic materials standpoint, oil should be oil. Right. Uh, mineral oil absorbs a lot faster than some other oils. Uh, and that's generally why it's cut into needs foot oil, um, you know, and so on. But I guess my warning with food oils is they're food oils. Right. Things eat them. Uh, food oils can go rancid. Food oils can attract animals. Uh, the absorption rate of some of these oils is kind of questionable. So you don't really know how fast or slow it's going to go. Um, and you can say, well, you know, what about pure olive oil, pure avocado oil? Well, it's, it's kind of a known fact that unless you're spending top dollar for these oils, a lot of times they're adulterated with other vegetable oils along the way. So my feeling is if you're comfortable with putting Crisco or Wesson or, you know, Mazzola, canola, whatever, on your leather goods, then, you know, fire away, do what you will. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, you know, needs foot oil is the best combination of durability, absorbability, and compatibility with veg tan leather. Um, I've heard horror stories about people using other food oils. Uh, you know, a guy put peanut oil on a brand new saddle. Three days later, the squirrels had eaten essentially the entire saddle. Who knew? Squirrels, peanuts, surprise. Um, but, you know, these other oils, uh, some of them are, are, you know, gear oil components. Some of them are just straight mineral components. I mean, uh, you know, so it comes down to personal preference. Ultimately, you can decide what you want to do, uh, you know, but my feeling is when you're doing traditional type projects like this, um, stick with what's traditionally used. Easy as that. So... Uh, quick recap, uh, you can go with, if you're sticking to Neatsfoot oil, you can go with regular Neatsfoot, you can go with uh, heated Neatsfoot, and then you can break that further down into, you know, regular tinted, cold, regular tinted, warm, or some combination kind of depending on what you want. Again, the ratio for tinting Neatsfoot oil, and keep in mind this is with Phoebing's standard dye, not Phoebing's pro dye, is, uh, is 94 to six oil to dye. And you can multiply that out, you know, go as far as you like. Uh, I usually make 500 milliliters at a time, uh, you know, so five times six, so that's 30 milliliters of dye. And then you can mix your dye ratios as, as well. So you could do two, even three colors if you wanna mix dark brown with, you know, with mahogany, or you wanna just use Sheridan brown, or you wanna just use light brown. I mean, uh, you know, they make green, they make red, they make all these other colors. And you can uh, tint, uh, you know, your oil accordingly. And interestingly, if you get a hold of Phoebing's antique paste in natural, those dyes can also be used to tint antique paste. So if you're the antique using kind and you want to introduce a little bit of color into the depth of your tooling, that's something you can do. Um, I don't know of anybody personally who employs that technique with any regularity, but it's out there. You can use it. You can do it. So anyway, that is the, uh, that is the basics of oiling. That's all there is to know. That's not all there is to know. I like, um, that's all that I think really pertains to this project. Now, uh, if there's interest in some of these other topics, we can delve into them in another live stream. Just shoot me a message, whatever, and uh, and we'll dig into it. But as far as oiling your veg tan, that's all there is to it. So thanks for stopping by. Hopefully this helped you. There's the cat. Uh, and we will see you soon. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for your support.